two faces of Beulah, a pictorial review of the wind and flood damages wrought by one of history's mightiest hurricanes. Presented in the public interest with the Magic Valley Electric Cooperative, serving the southern tip of Texas. <laughs> September 8, 1967. A tropical depression blew into a tropical storm with winds of 50 miles an hour, some 35 miles west of Martinique in the French Antilles, and it drew the name Beulah. September 8, 6 p.m., hurricane force winds reached 13 persons killed on Martinique, two on St. Vincent Island, one in Puerto Rico, two more on the Dominican Republic's south coast. Haiti's towering mountains chopped winds to below hurricane strength. Tropical storm Beulah moved west very slowly. A sudden change came the 14th of September, a rebuilding to hurricane force as Beulah was 680 miles south of Miami. 11 a.m. Sunday, September 17th, nine-day-old Beulah starts entering the Gulf of Mexico and the U.S. Weather Bureau issues its first hurricane watch for the Texas coast. At 2 p.m., small craft along the Texas and Mexican coasts were advised to stay in port. By 11 p.m., winds were up to 95 miles an hour. At 2 a.m., Monday, September 18th, the bulletin for the first time during the storm used Brownsville, Texas as a location reference point. Beulah was 450 miles southeast and was headed west-northwest 12 miles per hour. The approach began affecting the lower Texas coast. Pounding waves started slamming ashore on South Pottery Island. Jetties at the Brazos Santiago Pass felt the angry seas. The fishing craft quickly sought haven from this very dangerous storm moving toward Texas at a steady pace. And people began getting ready too. Portable radios were put in good order. Extra lights and lanterns were bought along with plenty of batteries. And counters were fast emptied of bread, the staff of life. By late Monday, South Texans realized that no repeat of the previous year's near miracle was likely. Almost exactly a year earlier, Brownsville had battened down against Hurricane Inez, which turned abruptly to the west, entering Mexico. But Beulah didn't seem so inclined. Newsmen quickly set up at the Weather Bureau in Brownsville. And evacuation orders brought a stream of cars from Port Isabel and other immediate coastal areas. The Weather Bureau advised any necessary driving be completed as quickly as possible. By late Monday, September 18th, refugee centers were rapidly filling, and the full implication of the approaching storm became apparent. Bishop Humberto Maderos of the Brownsville Diocese rushed home from an upstate meeting to help give comfort and reassurance to those who had fled their homes. Dozens of shelters were opened throughout the lower Rio Grande Valley in most public buildings and in many churches. Disaster agencies quickly set up shop. 5 a.m. Tuesday, the 19th of September, brought a change from hurricane watch to hurricane warning as Beulah aimed at Brownsville. Winds 125 miles an hour, gales extending 250 miles north, and all flights were canceled. The storm center winds were 130 miles an hour when land radar had Beulah within range by 8 a.m. September 19th. 200 miles out her course was straight toward Brownsville. So last night coming out and going in uh, was uh, severe to, uh, mod to uh, moderate turbulence. Uh, depending on how, uh, how, how intense it is today, we may, we, we're expecting the same today. Uh, we, we're going to look for the weak side to enter the eye, we're going to uh, uh, much possible go around it and on radar pick out the weakest part. By that I mean on radar where your uh, return on the radar isn't as dark or intense to enter it. Uh, we don't want to get shook up any more than we have to. 
Special Hurricane Hunter planes back up land radar in keeping the storm under constant surveillance. A cylinder dropped through the eye, radios back vital data before it finally sinks into the sea. Brownsville radar shows Beulah 170 miles out, winds 135 miles an hour. The newsmen here, Weather Bureau specialists, put technical jargon into layman terms. Jeff Baker, the Bureau's public information officer from Washington, advised newsmen of the impending danger to their own personal safety. Unlike sturdy structures sheltering thousands of refugees, the airport terminal building housing the Brownsville Weather Bureau was far from being hurricane proof. 3 p.m. Tuesday, Beulah, 140 miles out, temporarily stalled. Then Ernest Bice, chief of the Weather Bureau, told newsmen Beulah was moving again with top winds between 125 and 150 miles an hour, the barometer down to an alarming 27.26 inches. Shortly thereafter, Bice revealed the top winds now were even higher. Now, as if the storm is stronger than it, uh, or at least it has gained more strength, and winds in it now are upwards of 175 miles an hour. Say between 150 and 175. That's scary thought. That, that, that really is, but uh, reconnaissance aircraft indicate that there's lots of wind in this storm. Newsmen had lost no time in reporting this dramatic and chilling intensification of Hurricane Beulah, and then the ranks of reporters thin. The evening of September 19th saw only a handful of newsmen left to give first-hand reports from the Brownsville Weather Bureau. Reports just then of 11 deaths in Yucatan had raised the known Beulah fatality toll to 29. Many victims hadn't even known that Beulah was coming. A hurricane watch had been issued for the Texas coast 64 hours before hurricane force winds struck the Brownsville area. And the watch was changed to a warning 20 hours before the first hurricane winds were felt. 120 miles out, 9 p.m. radar, September 19th. 2 a.m. September 20th, hurricane force winds extend 90 miles from the eye, which is 70 miles from Brownsville. The highest winds, 160 miles an hour. The old building housing the Weather Bureau shudders with each gust. At 109 miles per hour, the anemometer atop the Brownsville Weather Bureau bends to a 30 degree angle, hampering an immediate record of top wind, pending tests on the instrument. It's believed to be near 150 miles per hour, based on readings taken by docked freighters afforded some protection. <laughs> 